Okay, so we, I just want to read uh, one scripture and then we'll pray. Okay, this is from, um, yeah. Okay, this is from 2 Timothy, right? 2 Timothy chapter 1. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 says, Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Okay, so verse 6, Paul is reminding Timothy, stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. So stirring up meaning use, activate, um, Basically, it means you move in it. Okay, stir up the gift of God, which is in you, through the laying out of my hands. And then he says in verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Okay, so that's the promise. That's the truth, just from God's word. So even as we pray, you know, we can pray the same thing. Lord, you know, enable me to walk in the gifts. Enable me to stir up the gifts that you put in me right, through various means. Um... You have not given me a spirit of fear, but you have given me a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Right? So let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the, for the gifts of the Spirit released in us by the work of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that you do that for us, Lord. And Master, we thank you that your desire is that we, we walk in these gifts, Lord. That we walk in the fullness of this each and every day, Lord. And so, God, we pray that uh, even though we might have hesitated because of fear, of inadequacy, or any other reason, Lord, Father God, I pray that um, uh, since we know that you've given us the Holy Spirit, spirit of power and of love, and you've given us a sound mind, a disciplined mind, and so, God, we pray that um, we, we thank you for all this that you've given us and uh, so that we might walk in the fullness of the use of these gifts, God. We thank you. We thank you for the work of your Holy Spirit in us, even today. And we invite, uh, Lord, and we yield to the, um, to the work of your Spirit in us, Lord, uh, more and more, Father God. Yes, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So today we'll continue from where we stopped. So we've been learning about the gifts of the Spirit. Um, we looked at um, 1 Corinthians 12. Last class, we looked at the listing of the gifts. Um, so now we'll go a little deeper into understanding, like understanding the gifts of the Spirit, um, a little more depth. Okay, let me share the notes. Okay. So we looked at the gifts of the Spirit. We saw that um, there, uh, we, we also, you know, saw that he's the one who distributes. There are different kinds of activities, but it's the same Holy Spirit, right? We looked at all that. So today, we look at one other aspect of these gifts, which is important for us to understand, okay? Because um, in listing these gifts, uh, Paul actually asks a very important question, okay? A series of questions, okay? We see that in 1 Corinthians. 12. Okay. Um, let's turn in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 12. Okay. Paul asks a series of questions to the Corinthian church. He's asking to uh, the believers, right? 1 Corinthians 12. And these are the questions. We find these questions um, in from verse 29 onwards. Okay. Um, verse 29 onwards. And before that, let's read from verse 28. Okay, verse 28, God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets, teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, and varieties of tongues. Okay, verse 29, he begins to ask, ask some questions. Um, just look into your Bibles here. Um, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 29. Yeah. Okay, so verse 29, he asks these questions. Are all apostles, are all 
prophets, are all teachers, are all working workers of miracles, do all have gifts of healings, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret. Okay, so he's asking a question, and and the answer is uh, is something that you know it's 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 a rhetoric, which means the answer is implied. Okay, what is the answer? The answer is no. Right, all are not apostles. All are not prophets. So, in asking this question, he's not really asking for a response or an answer. He's saying, "You know the answer. You know that it is actually no. The answer is no. Not everybody is an apostle. Not everybody is a prophet, and so on." Okay. And then he goes on to verse thirty-one and says, "But earnestly desire the best gifts." And then he says, "Yet I show you a more excellent way." Okay. So, so this question has confused many people, saying that, "Okay, since." You know, he has listed this saying, all are not prophets, all are not apostles, um, all are not, you know, all this. Because he also says, do all have gifts of healings? Do all have, do all speak with tongues? Right? So if the answer is no, then why bother? Right? Why bother even learning about it? Why bother asking God for it? Because if, if God wants to give, let him give. Otherwise, you know, why should I even desire that? Right, that's the conclusion we come to. Okay, so for us uh, to understand this, that is one Corinthians twelve twenty eight onwards. Let's you know, let's follow in our notes. Um, in the book, I think it's page seventy two. Um, is it seventy two or sixty eight? Uh, it talks about you know you have that that diagram there, that table, which gives you the categories of spiritual gifts. Uh, in which page do you find 72? Okay, in the in the PDF that I'm projecting, it's 72. Okay, so it it it, it gives this listing of spiritual gifts. It says categories of spiritual gifts. Okay, so first first column is the gifts of the spirit. 1 Corinthians 12. Okay, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 11. Okay, that gives the listing. What is the page number? 65 is it okay 65 in the new book which means the pdf upload would also be 65 it's either 65 or 72 okay um uh, whatever i've uploaded in the classroom section okay anyway um so first column has gifts of the spirit so that lists down all the gifts of the spirit starting from word of wisdom word of knowledge etc okay, now that listing is for all the believers Okay, how do we say that? Why do we say that? Because it says that he distributes individually to each one. Okay, which means each one means each one, right? One, one, you know, one by one, all of us. So he distributes these gifts, the nine that are listed there, to each one, which means for all believers. Okay. Second column, that there are several uh, scripture references which refer to different sets of gifts. Let's look at one. Now let's look at uh, the book of Romans. Um, Romans chapter 12. Okay, Romans 12. And um, verse 6 onwards. Or maybe from verse 4. Okay, verse 4 he says, for as we have many members in one body, not all members do, sorry, but all members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. You see that? He who teaches in teaching. Verse 8. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Okay, it starts by saying that you know, there are differing gifts. There are differing functions. Each member does not have the same function. Okay, and then he goes on to list these gifts. Okay, there's one more category, right? We see in... Um, Ephesians 4, 7. Okay, let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians 4. Okay. 
Ephesians 4, 7. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Okay? And then it goes on to talk about verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Okay? So you, you note the word there, some. Okay? So in these give in these listings that we see, it is not for all, but for some. That's our understanding. Right? So even in uh, the previous one that we saw in Romans chapter 12, verse 4 to 8, now there are different members saying, if this is your gift, then use it. Talks about prophecy, talks about leadership, talks about compassion, giving, right? generosity. And it says, if this is it, use it. So which means that we can say that in the body of Christ, like in the church, each of us are part of the body of Christ, each of us as believers. So we have been given certain functions. Okay, Maybe for some, it is to do a more of a shepherding or a pastoral nurturing kind of a ministry. For some, maybe it is leadership. For some, it is maybe teaching. Okay, For some. And the other part of it is what we call as the ministry gifts. That is the third column that we see. Okay, Third column, ministry gifts, Ephesians 4.11. So we have these three categories. One, for all believers, the gifts, gifts of the Spirit. The second category that we see, for some, it is given. right. And then because we are part of the body of Christ, we have certain functions in the body of Christ. Not all are graced with the same function. Some teach, some lead, some show generosity, etc. So in order to fulfill the function, fulfill that role, just like, okay, you know, if some are, you know, have the, let's say, the ability to, to be carpenters, the ability to be, or the skill to be, um, you know, plumbers. So for a carpenter, certain gifts, certain tools are given. Right, like a hammer, like a saw, like nails, right, to fulfill that function of a carpenter. For the plumber, some tools are given, maybe like a spanner, like a wrench, right, all those things are given to fulfill that role of the plumber. So he's just saying the same thing. You are in the body, you are you have a certain function, function meaning you have a role, you have a function in the body of Christ as a member. So you have been given some gifts in order to fulfill that function. Okay. Now you see that list is a bigger list, right? Uh, Romans 12 talks about leadership and so on. Okay, let's look at one more list. You know, First Peter 4. Okay, First Peter, chapter 4, verse 10. He says, "As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another." as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, what does it say? Verse 11, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, ministers meaning serves, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong all the glory. Okay, So here also it says that each one different kinds of gifts are given okay so uh, so we can call it you know the bible doesn't call it this but we can call it as a membership gift okay so first column first category gifts of the spirit second category membership gifts which means it could be prophecy it could be nurturing it could be leading it could be giving because we are in the body of christ okay uh, maybe some of us are gifted in maybe in the in the area of worship maybe some of us are gifted in you know uh, compassion, you know, taking care of people. So the Lord gives us certain gifts in order to fulfill that ability, fulfill that responsibility. Okay. Then we have something called ministry gifts. That is a third column. What is this ministry gifts? It says the fivefold ministry: apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. And it says only to some is it given. Okay, not all, some. So which means. Not all are called to be apostles. Not all are called to be prophets. Not all are called to be pastors. Okay, But the question is this. 
not all are called to be prophets but can all believers prophesy what do you think yes or no okay if it is yes how many of you are saying yes how many of you are saying no yes sir all hands up by yes okay yours no okay okay if you if you're saying yes why and how can we say that all can prophesy sorry what prophecy is every believer can prophesy yeah so the question is how can we say that right we need to know from the word hey every believer can prophesy so the people will ask how can you say how how can we say that we should have a reason right anyone online uh, Okay, the same Holy Spirit who has the gifts dwells in us. Sanjay says, the same Holy Spirit who has the gifts dwells in us, right? But the same Holy Spirit is what you know. We, as we read these categories and classifications, we see that not all are called to be prophets, not all are called to be pastors, not all are called to be evangelists. So, if we say that everyone is called to prophesy, then there should be a very good reason for it, right? Yeah, one partly, you know, that answer, yes, the same Holy Spirit dwells in us. He has all these gifts. So it's an expression of the uh, of the Holy Spirit himself, right? Now, what did the Lord Jesus say? The Lord Jesus says that, my sheep hear my voice. They know me and they follow me. Okay. So what is, what is prophecy? Just hear the, hear the voice of God. And to do accordingly or to speak accordingly, right? So that is prophecy. Hearing God's voice and doing according to whatever he says, right? Uh, which means God speaking to man through man in a simple way, right? So can everyone who is called, the Lord Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. So if we are, if he is our shepherd, then we can hear his voice, right? And we can speak. Whatever he's asking us to do, asking us to speak or do. So which means every believer, all believers can prophesy. And the same goes for all the gifts of the Spirit, which is listed in 1 Corinthians 12. Okay, so we need to be attentive and, and you know understand that 1 Corinthians 12, all the gifts which are listed there, it is it is for all the believers, all the believers to experience to walk in and so it is it, it says very clearly that the same holy spirit distributes to each one each one every believer right so that is another proof the other proof that we see is in the exhortation that paul gives in chapter 12 chapter 14 right what does he say in chapter 12? You know, we looked at that verse, the last verse of chapter 12. Somebody, you know, look at it, read it. The last verse of chapter 12, 1 Corinthians 12. What does he say? Earnestly desire what? Huh? The best gifts. Is it gift or gifts? Gifts, which means many. He's listed all these gifts. He says, earnestly desire the best gifts. Look at 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Is it one or many? Many. Right? So he's saying, let there be no restriction. Earnestly desire the best gifts. Pursue love, desire spiritual gifts. Gifts, whatever he has listed, he's saying desire it. Why should I desire if God doesn't have no idea, does not have any intention of giving it to me? Why should I desire? Right? So which means that this exhortation for every believer to desire the best gifts, to 
pursue and pursue the uh, love and desire spiritual gifts means that these gifts are for all believers it's for me okay so that's why we can say that yes all believers can prophesy all believers can pray in tongues but not all believers are called to be apostles or prophets or evangelists or teachers right yes we can teach all of us are, believers can teach but not all are called to be that ministry gift or ministry office responsibility of a teacher all of us can plant a church yes or no yeah we can go and preach the gospel and that's what happened in the book of acts we saw right so philip went there he uh, shared the gospel people came to the lord a ch church was born right in the in the book of antioch i mean sorry in, in the book of acts we read about the antioch church who planted the church nobody knows right the names of the believers are not written here but it just says that believers went there they shared the gospel and the church was started right so all of us we can share the gospel start a work but not all of us are called to be either apostles like pioneers in a particular place or no or are all of us called to be pastors right yes or no some are called to into that ministry okay um is that a question yeah shani yeah I'm, I'm a little confused because i know you said that everybody is called to prophesy but i thought that if you prophet from my understanding if you prophesy that makes you a prophet but I'm, but you're saying it's not i'm, I'm a little confused mm -hmm. can you clarify that please yeah so so the thing is not everybody who prophesies is a prophet okay so as a believer you know i can prophesy you can prophesy and we do that by the inspiration of the holy spirit right we can like for example 1 corinthians 14 and um, verse um yeah verse 3 says he who prophesies speaks edic edification exhortation and comfort brings edification and ed exhortation and comfort to the church comfort to men to people right and he says that uh, he who prophesies edifies the church or builds up the church right so which means that we can prophesy but for the ministry office of the prophet some are called okay the the thing is like this you know if for example in the natural if we see you know uh, if I fall down or if I hurt myself, definitely I can administer first aid to myself. You know, I can clean the wound, I can put turtle or whatever, some antiseptic, put a band-aid on it. I can take care of it, but I can't call myself a doctor, right? Just because I took care of the wound, I cannot call myself a doctor. So that is the, you know, in, in a simple way, in a crude analogy, you know, that's what it is. So here we see in Ephesians 4 that some are called to that ministry responsibility you know it could be any of us it could be some of us some are called into that office which means that this is their their call in life to be prophetic or to be pastoral to be apostolic in nature to be you know pioneers to take the gospel where you know so this is their full time calling this is what they have been called, authorized, commissioned by God to do. Yeah. Yes, Shani. Okay, so I think I understand. I was about to ask the question, but I think you clarified it. So I guess the difference is that in terms of apostle, prophet, they're doing this like full time, like their job. In terms of yeah. prophecy, to prophesy, am, am I correct? Right, right. Okay. This is their calling. They're commissioned, uh, you know, this is their call in life. Right. And it, it could be, it could even be an overlap. You know, like a, a teacher, pastor, or a teacher, prophet kind of thing. It could even be an overlap between these five. But then, yeah, this is what they're called and commissioned to do. Right? Okay, thank you. Yeah, but the thing is, but the good thing is this, that all of us are believers, as believers, can walk in all the gifts of the Spirit. Right? So, for example, you know, I just take prophecy and the prophet. Now, all of us can prophesy. But the gift of the prophet or the ministry role of the prophet is just a little more than that. 
Why? Because we see the work of the Prophet in terms of geographical scope of ministry. It is not the, just the local church, but it's, it could be local churches, it could be nation, it could be nations, right? Uh, it could be, and the, and the office role of the Prophet, we see, has a, more of a foretelling aspect to it, where we see Agabus as one of the New Testament prophets, where he's declaring, you know, about, about the of the natural disaster, which is famine, which is uh, yep, about to come, and so on. And so people prepare themselves. Um, he prophesies to Paul about, um, you know, what awaits him in Jerusalem, and and so on. So, and and he's recognized as a prophet there, which means that is what he did. Even Philip, he's recognized as a prophet, right, or, or an evangelist, sorry. He's called as an evangelist, which is, that is what he did. That is what God had called him to do, right? And Paul says, okay, uh, about himself, he says, uh, I'm called to be an apostle of Christ. And right? he says, I'm a bond servant. I'm called to be an apostle, uh, a teacher, and so on, right? So we see that this is what they're called to do. Yeah. You have another question? Yeah, so how does somebody know if they're like, called to do it like some people say they're i guess they're they want to start a church with a pastor but then like the church closes down how does somebody really know is god just tells them how they truly mm -hmm. know they're, that's their calling because sometimes it yeah. doesn't work out yeah so how does one know the call well um well the, the the thing is that god will equip the person the god and god will consistently use the person in a certain way and if one is faithful and obedient to follow through and to you know to to minister in the way that God, uh, and and the, and the openings as well that God you know points opens up opportunities etc. So the person just walks in it um, all the while being equipped and uh, and walking consistently and faithful in that particular way right in the, that particular area and um, and and the thing is that well the people recognize recognize the role right by the fruits you will know them is what uh, the scripture says by the few fruit you will know them so this is the fruit that they are bearing in ministry it's that is pastoral this is the fruit that they are bearing that it's apostolic in nature right and yes that that is by the fruits and uh, and the fact is that god can also very specifically call and say i i want you to do this and i want to use you in this manner Right, very specifically, he could do that. The, the thing is that he could do it in many ways. Right? Um, but the thing is not to, you know, just as a disclaimer, not to get so caught up. We are learning this so that we know the differences. But the thing is not to get so caught up in the, in the role or the label of it, you know, the, 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 um, you know what is the title and so on, not to get caught up in that, but actually to just to be obedient and faithful to serve, right? In whatever manner he has graced us to serve. So that would be the right way to do it. But of course, we can always ask the Lord, Lord, do you want me to serve in this manner? Are you calling me to serve in this manner? And so on. But the thing is, as he opens up opportunities, as he places us in those environments, to be faithful and to be obedient to serve him in that manner. I hope that helps. Yes, thank you. Right, okay. Okay, so we saw these classification of gifts. Let's let's move on, right? So we see this, and and so that answers clarifies 1 Corinthians 12, 28, 29, 30. So the question that he asks, you know, do all are, are all apostles or all prophets or all the saying? The answer is no. Okay, so we should not get confused. You know, he's asking the question, do all speak in tongues? You know, the answer is no. So therefore, you know, only some people can. You know, that is not the that is not the right conclusion because he goes on to talk about desiring the best gifts he goes on to talk about pursuing love and desiring spiritual gifts okay so all the gifts um, and and again he ends the whole discussion or the teaching on the gifts of the spirit 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 39 he says desire uh, earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with tongues and so on right so so definitely, you know, the gifts of the Spirit are for all the believers, um, and it's an expression of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so uh, very quickly, we have, there's a differences here. You can go through that. Um, 
I just want to, uh, you know, quickly go through how, um, okay, we looked at how the Holy Spirit initiates the release of the gifts. Um, that is the five spiritual senses. Um, we, we understood that. Okay. Let's look. I just want to come back to this a little uh, um, later. But let's look at the the gifts per se, right? What are these gifts? Um, the listing of the gifts. Let's um, let's go into the um, details of these gifts. Okay. Um, but just before that, just before that, some foundation for the release of the gifts, and this is found in um, um, page seventy-seven in the book. Okay, understanding of the gifts of the Spirit. So we are going to go into the details, specifics of what these gifts are, how these gifts function. But before that, a foundation, an understanding overall about these gifts. Okay, the first thing is that the gifts are given for all believers. Okay, I think that's what we looked at. That these spiritual gifts are for all believers. The the the, the common or the, the old understanding was, okay, I have this gift, and God uses me in this gift. You have this gift, etc. So, you know, let's use it. But the fact is that we can desire more. We can desire all. And the gifts of the Spirit are for all believers. And we looked at the scriptures as well, right? Um, so a couple of scriptures that we saw, 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 31, Paul is saying, desire the best gifts. Okay, so what is the best gift or gifts? Does that mean that some gifts are not good? Good, better, best. You know, that is the cl cl classification that we can think of. This is good. Something else is better. The other one is the best of them all. So what do you think? What do you think? He's saying best gifts. So which means there should be something which is better, than the rest, right? When you say best, you know, this is the best, this is the best shirt, pick it, which means that that stands out from the rest, right? So is there something like that? What do you think? Huh? <laughs> Prophecy is the best gift, okay? What do you think? Because he says very clearly, right? And online folks also. Okay, so. Um, okay, um, it's like the dominant gift in a believer, says Sanjay. Akil, all gifts are good, but the one you are blessed with, the best suitable for you. To edify God in your life. Okay. Then John. Okay. Is this a question there? We'll come back to you, John. Um, for your question. Okay. So it says it's a dominant gift. Uh, Sanjay, that dominant gift is uh, is something what we would call as a membership gift. Right? Where God is using you consistently uh, to function in a certain way. And so the gifting actually enables you to fulfill that role or function. Okay. So that we would call as a, like a membership gift. But but what is, is that the best gift? Okay. Um, and Akil's answer, you know, best with, blessed with, best suitable for us to edify God in our lives. Okay. Another way to put it is this. The best gift is the one which is best suited for that particular situation or need or solving a particular problem. Okay. What is the need? Let's say the need is physical healing, right? From that list that we see, we see that gifts of healings would be the best gift in that particular situation, right? Because that is the need, right? Or maybe somebody is missing an organ in their body, right? Missing an organ in their body, something, and because of which there is an illness or whatever, the best gift would be working of miracles, where there is even a, it's a creative miracle 
of that organ functioning, of that organ forming in, in the body because of the supernatural work of God. That would be the best gift. Yeah, Gertrude, you have a question? Yes, Pastor. For healing, uh, we have to pray as the Holy Spirit leads you or we can just pray for uh, any need of people. Yeah, so we see the need and we understand the heart and uh, nature of God, right? Heart and the will of God. What is God's will? God's will is to take care of that need in a person's life. Now, the need could be because of various things. It could be because of their own problem. It could be because they walked into something. It is because, you know, unintentionally, intentionally. It could be various things, right? But if you look at the life of Jesus, if you look at uh, the nature and character of God, it is to heal. Jehovah Rapha. People came to Jesus and asked, Lord, if, it, if you are willing, you can heal. The Lord says, I am willing. So we know the heart, the will of God. So we pray. We know the, the, what happened on the cross, the redemptive work of the cross. It talks about the great exchange, which is he carried our sickness. He carried our grief. He took our pain on the cross. Why? So that by his stripes, we are healed. Right? So we see the cross talks about redemption, spirit, soul, and body. And therefore, we know that's the, that's the will of God expressed in all these ways. So we pray confidently. We pray for God's power to touch and heal. Now, well, it could be because of faith, mutual faith. It could be because of, you know, we learn about that, all that, you know, what brings about healing. There are different ways by which God brings about healing. And the gifts of the Spirit that we are looking at is one avenue through which God brings about healing, where we pray and the Spirit of God manifests the gifts of healing, it brings about healing. Right? Uh, Hope that answers. What, I, what I experience is when the Holy Spirit leads for yeah. healing, it is healed. But when I pray sometimes on my own, there is no healing. This well, is. Uh, mm. Yeah, the, the thing is, uh, you know, what is God's heart for a person who is unwell, who is suffering? You to know, be we, well. To be well, yeah. So we align ourselves with God's heart. We align our will, our decision, our choice with God's, God's choice, God's will. And we pray, right? Sometimes, okay. yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Um, okay, Pastor. Thank yeah, you. Uh, right. Most welcome. Okay, so then, um, okay, so now that is, you know, that is sorted, right? Okay, so let's look at John's question. Um, I pray, okay, yeah, so that's a challenge now, Shani, you know, it says, okay, what if there is, what if there is, you know, there's no answer to that prayer, you know, we've been praying, but there's no healing, okay, that's a different aspect altogether, which is addressed in um, healing and deliverance. The, you have a whole semester to study that. Um, but then the resources are there online as well. You know, we can we can look into that. Uh, so we can you can have that as a discussion for, um, you know, another class. Yeah, I just leave that. Shani, if that's OK. Um, Akil's question is all gifts are good, but the one you are blessed with Sorry, um, not Akil, John Blessy says, what, about, what is the difference between the prophet and the believer who can prophesy? So, so basically, that's, that's what we were looking at. So we need to have that understanding that as a believer, I can prophesy. As a believer, I can, you know, I can evangelize. As a believer, I can teach. I can, as a believer, I can nurture people in the, in the word of God. Right? But that does not make me uh, or bring me into the office of the prophet, which God has or it's 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 its own will right i can maybe i can desire for it but then the office of the prophet where a person's ministry and life calling is to is to do the work of a prophet right so that's the difference now as a believer now i if i'm not called to be a prophet well god will use me to prophesy definitely uh, release words of knowledge and, and prophesy bring exhortation edification and comfort in the lives of people God will definitely use me, but not necessarily as a prophet where the, the scope of ministry is beyond the local church. It's maybe to the city church, citywide church, maybe just to the church of the nation and to the global church, to the nations as well. 
right? Announcing the moves of God, uh, announcing, you know, several things, uh, maybe natural things that God is wanting to bring about. All that comes or becomes the role of the prophet. Now, God may not necessarily call me to do that. So that would be the difference, right? Hope that helps, John. Okay. Right. Okay, let's let's move on. Let's look at the second one. Okay, we looked at okay, all gifts are for the believer. Okay, the second thing that we see is the gifts of the spirit are a manifestation or an expression or a display of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and that is why it is called the gifts of the Holy Spirit, gifts of the Spirit. Okay, so look at it that way, right? It is God showing himself strong. It is God who is expressing himself. Okay, now how do you express yourself as a human being? You know, through speech, through your emotions, right? Through the things that you do, say, that is how you express yourself. Make yourself known. You introduce yourself to another person, yes? Right, you go and say, hello, I am so-and-so. You're expressing, you're introducing yourself. Now, the same way, these gifts are a manifestation uh, or an introduction and expression of the Holy Spirit. How do we say that? Let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians 12 again, right? 1 Corinthians 12 and um, verse 7 says, but the manifestation of the Spirit, is referring to the gifts of the Spirit, and he's saying, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Okay? The manifestation of the Spirit. So, the gift of the Spirit, or the gifts of the Spirit, are a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, an expression of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit speaking. It is the Holy Spirit doing something. It's the Holy Spirit displaying something, introducing himself. He's the Holy Spirit saying, hello, this is who I am. Okay? So, so if we look at it that way, even if you have any apprehensions about the gifts of the Spirit, we'll say, welcome Holy Spirit, because it is His way, Him making known in, in that situation, right? Okay, so it's a supernatural manifestation of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit are, are gifts of grace, meaning these are things that we desire, but how are they given? They are given out of grace. What is the difference? What does grace mean? It's something that is given not because you have performed well, right? Not because I have, um, you know, I have spent so many hours on my knees. It's not because I have done this, this, this. You know, I have all these qualifications. I have shared the gospel with so many people. I've lived as a believer for so many years. All this because of qualification experience and all that. It's not because of that. It is because it is a gift of grace. So in other words, which means that because these gifts of the Spirit are gifts of grace, they are not based on performance. Okay, That should free us, really. It's not based on performance. It's not based on qualification. It's not based on experience. Grace is always because of faith. Right? How did you receive salvation? It's through faith. It's by grace through faith. And so also, these are gifts of grace. Um, we see that it's 1 Corinthians 12, 4 talks about these are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. It's the same Holy Spirit who releases that. Um, we looked at one other verse, right? Uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. Let's look at that verse again. 1 Peter and uh, chapter 4, verse 10. Okay. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Okay, what are we stewarding? We are stewarding the grace of God. Good stewards of the grace of God. So these, these gifts are actually expressions uh, of the grace of God. Okay, so that's a, another thing. Bear in mind. Okay, fourth one. The gifts of the Spirit are given to edify people, build up people, and glorify God. Okay, 1 Corinthians 12, 7, again. Um, let's, let's read that verse. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Profit of all, meaning benefit of all. It is to build up the 
believer. It's to edify the believer, right? It's to edify people. What else do they do? Verse 12 talks about how um, for as the body is one and members, all members of that body are many, and so also is the, the Lord Jesus Christ. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, uh, it's chapter 14 and verse 12, sorry. Not 12 and verse uh, 12. 14 and verse 12 says, So you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Okay, let, it, let it be for the edification of this church that you seek to excel. Meaning that this gifts results in the edification, building up of the believer. Okay, so it edifies the believer. And in the edification of the believer, because it edifies the church, which is the body of Christ, we are actually glorifying Christ. Right? It is actually because we are pointing and saying this is not our performance. It's not because of our qualification or experience, but it's because of your grace, because it, it, you are the source. All this is from you, God. So we are glorifying God in this. It's a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Right? OK, uh, what else? The fifth one is the gifts of the Spirit are manifest as we walk in love, desire the gifts, and step out in faith, okay? As we walk in love, right? He is the one who gives us the gifts, but we are also called to pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, which means we are called to walk in love. Let the love of God be manifest in and through our lives, right? And it comes from a place of desire. We are called to desire the spiritual gifts, desire the work of God, desire these gifts, uh, to be in us and to be used by God through us, right? Uh, and, the, and the third thing is we step out in faith, which means that it is not a work, it is not a work of law, but it's a work of faith, right? And grace. So faith is involved in, in stepping out, which means it is a risk, right? You, you believe God and you step out in faith in the exercising of these gifts. Okay, so we'll stop here and we'll take a break.